What's up guys, doing a quick recording. Um, I should have probably started a little bit early, just to, but I'll get you caught up a little bit. Uh, 2012 MacBook Pro uh, issue is it is not charging the battery. Uh, so it wasn't turning on the individual that brought to me, put a new battery in, it does turn on with a good charged battery. Uh, the green light does come on on the charger. Uh, when you're in the operating system, it does give you uh, the little lightning sing signal to icon to indicate it is charging, but it's actually not pulling any voltage or any apps. Uh, it should turn orange when it's charging. Um, so, first area that I go to on that is uh, the charging circuit. There's a little chip that handles that, and there are a couple resistors on that charging circuit that um, I deck to make sure they're within their range. Uh, that's usually what the issue is um, from my experiences so far. Uh, so I did that. I uh, well, took a look uh, under the scope. There was actually a tiny little bit of uh, corrosion on it. Um, the board has a little bit like, I already wiped up most of it so you don't really see it so much right now. But right in here, there's some corrosion, uh, and it kind of spilled down right over to this resistor. Uh, this is the resistor. Um, these two here are part of the current sensing um, that goes to the battery, and that's where we have the issue. So when we take a look at the board view, Uh, this is the resistor we're looking at. Um, this it should have uh, zero ohms, and when I check on my multimeter, it comes up in the millions. So that resistor is bad. Uh, this one, I believe, is also bad. Uh, it should be 2.2, 7051. Uh, so that's 7051 right next to it. So we got uh, 7050, 7051, so we should have 2.2 and then um, 0. So this one here should be 0. Uh, again, when I check that, it's up at like 5 million, 6 million, so clearly it's wrong. This one here should be 2.2. Oh, that one is correct. Okay. So 2.4. So that one we got to replace is this one. Uh, shouldn't be bad. The other two that we would be concerned about are up here, uh, over here. These would both be uh, 10, and uh, those do come back okay. So we're good there. Hopefully the chip is good. If not, of course we can swap that out. But let's start off with just replacing that resistor. bigger tip so instead of getting hot air out and taking the whole board out um, it's right here in front of me I'll use uh, the bigger tip and try to swipe it off the board by just gobbing a bunch of solder and this will make it a little easier for me to replace these I'll steal it off of that no need to order it this is a very common board this is these are the boards uh, machines that I learned to work on these um, I learned all this stuff from watching videos um, working on some uh, in some groups talking to people um, from Lewis Rossman down in New York City he explains this circuit so many times um, and how it works, current sensing. Alright, 
So I'm going to remove the chip or the uh, resistor off of this board. And of course, uh, what we'll want to do is make sure that this one is good. It certainly looks good. And that one tests good. So I'll go ahead and remove that one. Usually I take the oh, bad one off first. Let me do that. It makes it a little easier to pop it right back on. Scope. That's not good. Not sure what I hit there, but okay. So I'm going to try to remove it just with putting a gob of solder um, on my tip. If I can touch both like that and not bridge everything else. Let's grab my tweezers. Good there. So the way to solder something uh, without using hot air, something like that, is you want to um, put solder on one pad. Cut that. It's a little tight fit in there. Suck all the solder off everything else, and then leave solder on another pad. So now I'm going to take the resistor off. And I'll use the hot air. I keep losing my scope. Am, am I hitting the button? I wouldn't doubt it. All right. So I'll use the hot air to remove it. going to add uh, some heat here to the one pad. And if I can get this big fat tip down in there, I'm golden. If not, I'm going to have to swap over to my other pen. That looks good. a 
a little bit. A little bit of alcohol. I like to use 99%. It's good for cleaning electronics. Sometimes if you have sticky stuff like food, juice, you need to have a little bit of water in with your isopropyl alcohol or it won't really pick it off or clean it off. do is plug in the charger and see if we get an orange light. And we do. And usually uh, after the battery's been plugged and plugged in and you hook a charge up, the board will start automatically on its own. So that's good. That's normal. That's what should happen. This is a test install, uh, so there's no private information on here. What's good now is you hear my, meet my uh, power supply uh, winding up. It's now drawing amperage like it should. And get my big head out of the way. And we'll go to about this Mac. System report. Power. And you see now down here it says charging. Yes. Let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. Right there it says charging. Yes. So we are good to go. One tiny little resistor due to some little bit of liquid. Now this is a uh, fairly old machine uh, 2012 still runs really nice as you can see with a solid state hard drive uh, but if that were to have been in 2012 13 and you went to Apple to uh, give this to them one they wouldn't work on it because there was liquid uh, damage a little bit of corrosion on it uh, and two they would just replace the board so they would work on it they wouldn't fix it they per se they would replace the entire logic board and would have charged you hundreds of dollars to do so so very easily fixed we're good to go I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down and let my guy know you're good to go Alright guys, have a great one, hope you learned something.